Hey there, welcome to episode number two. So, in our previous episode, we learned how solar radiation reaches Earth. We all know it creates wind, but how does it create wind? Now, the normal conception is in the hotter region, air becomes warm and goes up, and rising of the air leaves a vacuum space. Because of that, the air pressure drops there, and the air from surrounding areas where the air pressure is higher. From that area, air rushes toward the low pressure area, but it is incomplete. You may have seen this kind of figure on weather map, but have you ever wondered what is that? These lines are called isobars. These isobars or iso lines of pressure are placed after every 4 millibar pressure interval. It means after change of 4 millibar pressure, you get another isobar or another iso line of pressure. If these lines are very close to each other, it means the pressure is changing rapidly. That means the wind will move faster. If the isobars are far away from each other, it means pressure is changing very slowly. So the wind speed will be lower. Now, pressure change over a unit distance is called pressure gradient force and this pressure gradient force decides how fast the wind moves. So if you have ever noticed this figure on the weather map during cyclone, you must have noticed that these lines are very close to each other. It means the pressure is changing very rapidly. That's why when the wind is moving from higher pressure zone to lower pressure zone, it accelerates faster and faster. Because second Newton's law of motion, acceleration is equal to force by mass. Other than this pressure gradient, there is one other force which is affecting the wind flow that is the Coriolis force. Now this Coriolis force is a brain teaser for many people. Again, Newton come to rescue. To understand this Coriolis effect, you need to know the law of motions. Newton's first law, it talks about a concept called inertia. Inertia is the property of object because of which object tries to maintain its state of motion. Means if it is moving straight, it wants to move straight if it is moving at a certain speed. It wants to keep moving at this speed unless some external force compel it to change its state of motion. Science and geography coming together. Now the thing is, the equator moves faster than the other region. As we go from equator to polar region, the speed of rotation of Earth decreases. Say you throw a ball from equator towards the pole, it is supposed to go straight. But the thing is, the ball along with you is rotating faster. So when you throw the ball, the ball actually wants to retain that faster rotation speed. But as it goes towards the pole, the rotation speed is decreasing. But because of inertia, the ball tries to maintain is faster rotation speed because it is coming from the equator. So because of this, the ball actually reaches some place on the right in the north hemisphere and some place on the left in the southern hemisphere. Exactly opposite happens when you throw something from the higher latitude towards the equator. In the higher latitude, rotation speed is slower. So, if we throw the ball towards the equator, the ball is supposed to maintain its slower rotation speed. So, what happened? When you threw the ball from the higher latitude, the ball was rotating slowly and it tried to maintain its state of motion. It entered the region of higher rotation speed. It actually lagged behind because it could not rotate at that higher speed. So it lagged behind. It appears to us as if it has moved towards the right in the northern region and moved towards the left in the southern region. It would be helpful to understand why cyclone rotates in anti-clockwise direction in the north hemisphere in clockwise direction 
in the southern hemisphere so let's understand it with the cyclone in northern hemisphere anti clockwise rotation say we call a cyclone in tropical region and that is exactly the place we get it the wind from surrounding rushes towards the tropical region where the pressure has dropped suddenly from the, the higher latitude wind moves toward the tropical region that is the area where the low pressure center is situated it moves toward right isn't it if all the wind coming from the higher latitude moves right that is deflected towards right it actually creates a anti clockwise motion the whole system starts spinning anti clockwise and when we go to the other hemisphere that is the southern hemisphere the wind coming from higher latitude moves toward left so imagine all the wind coming from higher latitude moves toward the left this deflection this deflection of the wind soon start making the system rotating in clockwise motion but i apologize in advance that i have skipped many details because we are not in a position to understand those details right now so we will go slow so that's all from me thank you very much